We're back on a F-250. You can see right here, we have our fuse box mounted. And that's the cloned fuse box that we did. And we're gonna see once we turn the key on. All our lights and gauges are working. And she cranks up. We still got something going on with the tack, and we got a little bit of a miss. Uh, got something going on with one of the injectors, I believe. We may have to do a little swap there. But, as you can see, so we're making a list of some other parts we're going to need. We're gonna rob, uh, we've got some steering column issues right here. If y'all hadn't noticed, we got a broken barrel for the uh, shift tube. So we're gonna change out some stuff on the steering column. We got a few little interior upgrades and whip that 7.3 into a little better shape. This is our shift cable. That's fun trying to drive it like that. But we'll get back on that shortly and get you up to speed. All right, guys, we're back working on an F-250 this morning. Uh, this is the shift linkage on the steering column. This is your shift lever, your overdrive wiring. It pins in right here. This goes down the steering column, and this arm is the actuator that shifts it in gear, and this little hook is where the uh, shift indicator for reverse drive neutral hooks up to. And as you can see, somebody must have either had an issue with the safety not releasing or the yanked on it too hard and broke the tube so we're going to harvest the tube out of a donor truck and get her swapped in and see if we can't get her working again all right guys we are in uh, the donor truck that we've officially nicknamed the turd because it's just been a dirty mess since it got here so we got our gear shifter here we're going to pull the clamshells and you have to unscrew your tilt for the steering wheel and that'll expose the upper portion of the column and then we're gonna have to get down here sorry for all the wiggling and there's gonna be four bolts that drop the column down and then later we're gonna have to pull this shift cable that goes through the floor because the plastic on the upper portion of the uh, shift tube in that truck's been damaged so I'm gonna try and get you in the best place to see the footage but uh, anyhow, so to start off, we're going to pull the uh, tilt lever, and there's three screws in the clamshell. That'll come off and expose all of that, and then we're going to go after the four bolts. They're 13 millimeters. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see. Well, there's one right here, and there's, there's four of them on the round sides. And then the, once you get those done, the column will lay down on the, on the bench seat. Let me get y'all in a better spot and get started on that. All right, so we're going to get this tilt lever out the way. She can be a little stubborn because they usually lock tight it on there. There's two little flat notches that you can get a small crescent wrench on. And... Give her some turns. Let me get these headlight wires out of the way. So you got little Phillips screws, three of them, in this clamshell. We're going to screw our tilt back in because we're going to need it. Okay, so we got the bottom clamshell off, and you can see right here, that is a little detent button to release the key cylinder. And the key cylinder has us right here because it's bigger than, it goes over the, the flare goes over the upper clamshell. So we're going to turn it to the on position to press a little button.
and the key cylinder comes out. That frees that up and allows you to get the clamshell off of here without too much headache. <clears throat> All right, there's a little tab down here and this little slide comes up and that uncovers the whole boot to the shift arm. And what we are after is this tube right here. So we're gonna drop the steering column where we can get to these Torx head bolts and pop it up. All right, I couldn't get my hands under there, but this is the end of the shift cable and this just goes on a little detent ball this section right here is a little it's hard to get this to unlock but this is there's a little safety lock right here and you can get in there with a long punch and drive it out of the holder so now we're going to buzz off the four hold down nuts and see if we can get her to come on out of there A little tiny cable right here that has goes to your shift indicator and it hooks up to a little hook on the passenger side of the column there you just have to follow it up unhook that and here we go So this is our tube and that's your shift lever ball back there. So we're going to rob that whole tube off of here and bring it in the other truck. Okay, so just so you can get the makeup, there is a plug that goes up the steering column here and we're going to unplug him right here. Give me one second. Okay, so that's done. And this boot can get out of the way a little bit. Because that comes in the steering wheel. So we're going to pull these two torques, these two torques, and we're probably going to have, we may have to pull these to get the back out. So this is a T30 Torx. Just move this little shift indicator out of your way. It's kind of fragile. Well, get in there, you son of a bitch. using these little bits on a quarter inch dryer. I need a magnet in there. There's no lock on a regular quarter inch. I need to find, they might have a socket that'll fit that. And be quarter inch with the little lock ball in there. Hold these little bits.
Okay, so we're gonna lift the shift lock solenoid off and then we're gonna lift the entire shift tube out. We're gonna bring it to the shop and blow it off and reverse the procedure and put it in the truck. if you guys can see too good but we're gonna see if we can get her in on this side you got some little plastic bushings that have to sit in some saddles Right here and right here that the saddles go on so that your uh, your steering wheel can turn all right you get in here we get these saddles on the bushings there's a little lip so you want to make sure that you're seated in the lip of the black bushings in a barn once you put all this back up you don't want to have to tear it all down and straighten out anything so you kind of want to check as you go all right let's see until we get to that looks like everything's lining up good shift lock I'll show you in just a minute that there's a little lock that works off the brake light switch and that's when you apply your brakes and it releases the park lever so either somebody was cutting up and hit the lever pretty hard or they were yanking on it without the brake release and broke the tube. All right. Looking good. I'm gonna run everything in, kind of snug it, and check it out. appears to be working let me let you guys get a look at it see what I'm seeing so we turn the key on to the release section let me see if I can get a spot here maybe right here see if that'll stay put so we can depress the brake and you can see back here is how all of your shifting works when you lift the lever up and then when you turn the key off it locks it to where the steering wheel can't turn so let's get the let's see here we're gonna get this flipped around and stuck back in its spot there's a little nipple that that sticks on and plug this rascal back into its hole and the overdrive is done let me get a pad and I'm gonna run these bolts up and we'll give it a test all right before we get wrapped up up tight upstairs in the cab we have to undo this clip I can't don't think I can do this one-handed but 
these two little bars just raise out and then this will slide up and come off of there and release it from the shift lever on the side of the transmission I'm over here pointing the wrong way okay so these two little levers or two little X arms right here with the screwdriver you can pry them up I'm not going to be able to do this one handed and then once you have them out you can go up and then we'll have to pop this out of its holder and then it can fish out the cab and we can run the other one in so we'll get on that all right so right behind the accelerator right there we ran a brake cable I mean the shift cable back through put it in its anchor and attached it right back there so that's all done now we're ready to go back up with the four bolts best way I've found to do that you got to get your little shift detent back up but it won't go in just yet just kind of be careful with it because it is flimsy so what we're going to do is we're going to try and get a few of these nuts started this up and we can finish it up if my light will cooperate Now, once you get this started, this little tiny cable here for the shift indicator does have to go back on its little hook. And I think I'm going to need some needle nose for that, so we're going to... Uh, all right. Right up in here, a little J-hook takes the little cable and just strain up there and hook it and that allow that follows your shift indicator so your park neutral and drive will work in the gauge cluster and your shift indicator here has tabs on the left and the right and it stabs into the bottom of the steering column so we're going to put that in again we just want to make sure that all of this stuff happens you know that we don't want to take anything apart and forget it because it's a pain in the butt to get in here mm. I can get my hand in there I do not want to have to pull the cluster out but it looks like I'm gonna have to all right we're gonna go ahead and tighten these up then and we'll just pop the cluster loose and Tuck in this grommet down here. Keep our cabin airtight from the fumes and mess of the engine compartment. Alright. I'm gonna have to get eight millimeter to pop this cluster loose. Alright, let's pull this cluster out with some eight millimeters. 
actually seven. So I got the wrong socket. All right, let me get a seven millimeter and we're gonna pull the cluster loose so we can lift it up a little bit and line up, line up that indicator. Might not have to do this, just I've had the cluster out on several trucks, so to me it's easier to do it that way. And I got fat fingers, so trying to get into to reach all these little nooks and crannies can be a pain in the butt. All right, I'm gonna key. Get in. Put these screws back in. Now the reason why we did that, well, let me back up. On the shift cable we installed, I put back on the transmission. We didn't lock the lock cable in it. I'll show you how that works at the end of the video. When it's out of the transmission, it's a little easier to see. It's kind of dark down there and I can't get a good angle. All right, so keys off and we are in park. But if you notice, we are actually in reverse. So we got our line, we'll lock the cable in at the bottom to line that up. So let me get down there and see if I can get it done. I didn't get the uh, footage of it, and it's kind of hard to see, but this little white clip right here, right underneath the uh, ignition switch, has a little adjustment wheel on it. And as you adjust that, it will move your park lever left or right so that you can get I don't know if you can see that you can get aligned with park all right so we're going to put the clamshells top and bottom back on here and the bezel back in all right we're going back on with the clamshells on the bottom this one we popped the cylinder back in and snapped it back on from the top it just sits in and this kind of lines everything up So you got to kind of make sure that the clamshell is snapped together. Oh damn it! Getting the last 
of the screws in for the clamshell. Putting this back in for a tilt. Well, and that's that. We'll put the bezel back on, but we gotta uh, check a few wires first.